one thing that I'm going to do real quick is prepare for the vivid cast portion of this. So one thing that I'm using is actually a feature that's exclusive with Tyler Live 5 is bringing in a media clip. And I do want to thank Jordan Cornea from the Point Loma Nazarene um, University. He did provide this media clip for us. It is a women's basketball game. And you can see he's actually deploying vivid or um, tighter live graphics. So he, in a sense, is one of our users that is combining vivid cast and tighter live sport to pretty much bring graphics onto a software switcher that will let you do things like, you know, instant replay. You can see that there's a little motion bug that is looping every so often. But kind of beyond that, well, what I'm going to do is host this channel one of New Blue as an NDI source and then play this media clip. So in a sense, I'm generating a live camera feed of this game. So now what I'm going to do and then is navigate to VividCast. So you'll see in my VividCast project, I currently have different score bugs that are from Tire Life Sports license. So I have a basketball score bug, a, a graphic, a lower third, and a lineup, and then a transition. So we can go ahead and click that transition so we can see how it looks. Would you mind actually, um, or maybe just, just clarifying sort of the relationship between VividCast yeah. and Tyler Live? So one of the things that I was saying was how data controllers and graphics libraries are shared between the two. So gra all of the graphics that exist on New Blue, whether it be from Tyler Live or Tyler Pro, Title or live or vivid cast are saved under an ex a file extension named NB title. So these NB titles can be imported into vivid cast via this setup menu here. We can navigate to setup graphics. We will see that we can add graphics from the library. This is the exact same library that's ex there's a graphics there's graphics that are exclusive to vivid cast, but you'll see that I'll also get access to any graphics that are available through my title live library. Anything that is an NB title can also be imported directly into VividCast. So you'll see that if I have any NB titles that exist in any local file, we can fetch those and add them directly into the playlist. Then if we want to create a new graphic, something that'll look very familiar here is that we do have access to the designer tool as well. So if you like designing your own graphics from something like Titler Pro or Titler Live, you do have access to that design tool here. Do note that this version of the designer isn't the same one that we had we have currently in Titler Pro or in Tire Life 5. This designer is the one that exists in Tire Life 4. So if you want to if if it looks a little unfamiliar depending on the license you have, there is a this is a certain version of the designer. And kind of walking through some of the things that we can do. So for example, if I wanted to assign a data controller to graphics like I would in Tire Live, we can see that when I'm in the setup menu, I can navigate to different categories, but we, we need to navigate into graphics. We can Once we've added graphics into our playlist, so this is our playlist here, which is also reflected on the left panel, we can use this little drop down that's under graphics control to assign data controllers. And we can see under this column, or these different categories is we have pretty much at our available to us all the different data controllers that would ship with something like Tire Life 5. Or even in my scenario, I have I do have a license of broadcast. You will see all the data controllers from something like broadcast. So you even see like the API examples and some of our gaming stuff. All of that will be visible from here. And kind of showing how we would then do something like, let's say, for example, I want to bring in a camera source that is recording my live game. So what the next thing I would need to do is set up a live video input. This will detect any web camera sources, any NDI sources, screens that you have on your current machine and host them via to be a live camera feed. So you can see here, I am pretty much fetching that NDI feed that's being hosted through Tire Live. I can also add an additional input and I can grab a PTZ optics camera that's in the office. We'll go ahead and see the lights are off right now, but we can see that it's pretty much a live video source. Now, the next thing we wanna to do to be able to curate instant replay is enable this instant replay toggle. Now underneath the toggle, we will see instant replay and we can set the timer for how long it's going to log that replay. So we can set it to log a 15 second replay, a 30 second replay, all the way up to 60 seconds. And we'll see here that the memory used is pretty much it recording that clip for use. And the reason why we add that there so users understand available memory and how it could be affecting something like read or write time, or maybe even the performance of the software relative to what machine they're running it on. So we're gonna go ahead and hit done for now. 
and we'll see that under Vividcast, we have under our main live output, this first camera that we added. Now we can, if we want to switch to the second camera and we see that we have two different cameras. If we want to use one of the transitions from this graphics library that's particular to acrylic, we can go ahead and cue that transition. And now when we switch those camera sources, it'll use that transition to switch between the two. And we do have a transitions library that does ship with Vividcast. But like I said, if you have any graphics that ship with Tire Life 5 and they have transition graphics, which I would say about 70% of those libraries do have a transition graphic that belongs to them, can be used in here as a transition or as a graphic stinger. So now let's go ahead and start using our instant replay feature. So let me go ahead and move this from the top so I can actually interact with that top bar UI. We can see an instant replay button here. We simply enable the instant replay. And what it'll do is it'll generate a little, uh, an interface for th on the bottom right. So we can see actually Jordan who produced this footage used a Stinger transition that he created in Vividcast to do his own instant replay that coincidentally we get to witness here. So pretty much what he did is he captured a moment in his broadcast he used the instant replay key and then played it over his live footage. And then it uses a transition to cut into the instant replay and cut out of it and then go back into the footage in real time. So one thing that we need to do in order to do that ourselves is we can see here that we are currently on our live feed. Now what we need to do is, let me move this a little higher and enter replay. So once we enter replay, we will see that when we enter the replay, it is going to start recording that. When we play or click between any of these two sources, it'll pretty much find that instant replay. So we can see that the instant, the live monitor is this little tiny picture in picture here, but the cached instant replay is the larger monitor behind it. We'll see that playing in slow-mo. We can also see the runtime for that replay until it ends. We can also pause it or assign the total speed playback of it. So for example, we wanted to play in slow motion in quarter times or half times. We can assign that from here, or if we want to use to have it sped up or be in real time, we can use that option from here. But it's just a matter of clicking between, and it's pretty seamless in, in my opinion, being able to click between your real time footage and then cutting into your instant replay footage. And then we can exit the replay and then we can start generating a new replay by either clicking the instant replay again or jumping back into here. So let's say, for example, I enter my replay again. Now I've generated a new replay once I hit the enter based off of the time code that I see being recorded to the left of it. Got so, another great question from Adam Walthall. Can you scrub forward in the replay? I believe so, but let me go ahead and show this. So we can scrub through the replay and then play it. And now it'll play through the scrub through point right here. That is the starting point. And then it just kind of plays out throughout it. So it seems like when I scrub through, am I getting actual updates? So yeah. So one thing you might want to do is scrub to the point first before you actually play it. That way, like you saw here when I played it and then I scrubbed through, it actually cued the transition again. So you want to kind of scrub through it prior and then play it so you can find the actual end point for it. It, it might take a little bit of uh, like some practice getting familiar with what cues what, because there are a lot of things to interact with on this interface. But after a while, it does become a, a rather intuitive, especially since it's all being operated from just one panel. There's no need of having to uh, go between different interfaces and pressing all this stuff and set up and then making sure that it all works seamlessly every single time you do cue it. We can see there are some ads are being played. I'll go ahead and click out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we have one more question from Adam Walthall. Yeah. Is, um, does it save each file? Yes. So one thing that we can kind of briefly mention is that when we hit record or stream or both, we can actually set up a Vividcast under recording to output to a specific file location. It does come with its own encoder, encoder and a file format that we can select. So let me go ahead and expose those properties. We can see we have two different encoders. We also do have three different file formats. So for example, if you want to record something very light, you want to use the TS format. We can see here that we can decide to capture our instant replay clips by toggling this on. 
And then additionally, we can ISO record. So if, for example, I wanted to record a separate, um, a separate, a separate uh, recording for both my PTZ optics camera and this uh, live cam or this uh, recorded footage that was provided to us, I can use ISO recording to have that brought it be recorded and then brought into an NLES two separate um, paragraphs into there. I got another question. <clears throat> Um, from Kevin Perido, I believe that's how you pronounce that. Uh, in scoreboard tools hockey, can we move the zero from the clock over minus 10 minutes? So this is a clock formatting question. And I believe the answer is no. Uh, so the, yeah, I believe the straight answer for that is no. Um, would, I guess I could ask a question back is, uh, they, would they, which data controller are using? Does it sound like they're using the scoreboard tool yeah. data controller? Okay, yeah. So all the formatting that's being produced on the scoreboard tool data controller is all strict formatting. You might want to inspect the settings and see if there's any... I believe we're open to feedback like that. And if you see that a certain way that numbers are being produced by a certain scoreboard tool, we, we would be open to hear some suggestions because the settings is a place where we can build alternative formats for maybe how a score is displayed or how a time is being displayed. Mm -hmm. Correct. And again, the feedback is really important there. Um, so if there is something about the time formatting or basically anything else with the scoreboard tools, let us know because like i said we are in the development of, of revamping those scoreboard tools yeah. right now so any any changes that you would like to see made now is the time to to mention them because it's it's all in active development yeah and, and like sean was mentioning at the beginning of our, of our of our webinar is that the current updates and fixes that are being deployed on our scoreboard tool controllers are based on the feedback we've gotten in the past so if like say for example you get your your hands on the latest scoreboard tool for baseball and you notice that it's behaving differently and actually a lot more optimal this is all just based off of feedback and things we identified ourselves as well so the more you tell us the better uh, the, the the guarantee you'll get a guarantee that it'll behave in a, in a in a in an intuitive manner and have a more robust use behind it right and i believe i hit a pretty decent stopping point when in terms of the vivid cast integration and when it comes to all the data controllers it will be the same data controllers that do ship with something like tire life 5 or tire life 4 sport so you want to make sure that if you do engage with the vivid cast um, workflow kind of interplay with tire life 5 functions you might want to like kind of test around a bit and see how it is that you want to build your production based off of what is provided from your data controllers and graphics from having both pieces of software <laughs>